Hey everybody, um, for those of you who are new tuning in, my name is Ricky and I am one of the admins on our website LVADandYou.com as well as one of the admins on the Facebook page which is LVAD and You. Um, if you haven't joined LVAD and You group in the uh, Facebook page, it is a private group but please just send us a request. We welcome everybody to come to that. Uh, all we want you to do is make sure that you read the rules and you know, they're not very difficult, but uh, they are basic, and we want to make sure that everybody understands what they're uh, joining. Uh, we also have a website, uh, lvadandyou.com, and this website has a lot of great material on it. Um, it also has a link to our bad tags and bad equipment and gifts, which is being uh, made by uh, Creative Mugs and More. And you can go there directly to creativemugsandmore.com, and that and is spelled out, A-N-D, just like LVAD and you, A-N-D is spelled out. Um, and we also have a YouTube channel, which is where this video is being thrown to first anyway, so I can get a link. Um, I had a busy week this week, and I wanted to kind of go over it with everybody because I had promised that anytime I went through something, I wanted to share with everybody how it went and um, what you can expect. Because we so often hear from people that don't have a VAD that we can expect this or expect that. Remember, those of us with a VAD, LVAD, BIVAD, RVAD, we are people who have a few different things that we have to make sure are done before a procedure can be done. And having uh, had one on Thursday. I'm going to walk myself from Thursday all the way back to Monday. So on Thursday, I went to UNC Chapel Hill and I had a colonoscopy procedure. All right, preparations for this prior can be daunting. I tolerated it really well. I can't speak on behalf of anybody else, but I can tell you I tolerated it really well, actually, considering everything I had heard from people. Um, in my particular instance, they wanted me to drink a gallon of this liquid, uh, and they wanted me to do it uh, in, in increments of every 15 minutes, drink a glass. And boy, let me tell you, hmm. by the time I finished that, I was finished myself. But, like I said, I tolerated it pretty good. Um, there is uh, medication that you're going to have to take prior, one hour prior to having the procedure, and both of them are antibiotics. Um, I was not permitted to eat uh, 24 hours prior to the procedure. Three hours prior to the procedure, I couldn't eat uh, uh, wheat, grains, things like that. I had to pull back on that. Um, and the day before the procedure, the only thing I could eat was clear broth or uh, jello. And I chose orange jello. Um, which I still have half of in the refrigerator. I need to throw it out because I don't even want to look at that after <laughs> what I had done. Um, but it was it was tolerable. Um, so I get to the hospital. Uh, we had to leave here really, really early. Wicked, wicked early. 5.30 in the morning. Get to the hospital. Um, and the first thing they want to know is, did you take your antibiotic? Yep, okay, perfect. So... They get me ready and they put me in the prep room and they came by. The nurses talked to me. Uh, the anesthesiologist came and talked to me. Uh, the doctor doing the procedure came and spoke with me. Um, they wanted to make sure that I was comfortable with where the bad, uh, batteries and control unit was going to be positioned, which I was absolutely fine with. Uh, remember, these are experts at UNC. They have been doing VADs forever, it almost seems like. Um and my team was right there as far as making sure that uh, they made themselves available should the doctors need anything. Um, so uh, I can only tell you that uh, they got me in the room and um, they put, uh, got the IV started in me and told me that uh, pretty soon I would feel boom and I was out. I don't, I don't even remember the rest of the sentence. <laughs> Next thing I knew I was waking up. Um, and the doctor came in and it's always good, by the way, to have somebody with you when the doctor comes in, because if the doctor comes in and you're still loopy like I was, um, you're not going to be coherent enough to actually understand. And this is a procedure you don't want to have to repeat if you don't have to. 
only because it is a pain in the ass and there was no pun meant by that but it really is a pain because you've got to schedule your meals and you've got to you just got to do a few things there's a few hurdles that get thrown in your way get over the hurdles get it done and be good you know so they told me that they had found a pallet i think it was a eight millimeter nine millimeter pallet and that it was removed everything was fine um and that i didn't have to come back for another five years which yeah i can i can live with that um I'm going to actually post the results of my colonoscopy in the website because I want everybody to be familiar with um, what they're looking for, uh, what type of a report they'll give you at the end, telling you what they did, etc. Uh, I've taken some of the personal information off, you know, like my medical number and insurance number and all that stuff. But uh, they are actual uh it's an actual form that I got from the doctors, <coughs> excuse me, um, uh, right before I left the hospital. All right. <coughs> Sorry, I'm just getting over a cold. Uh, I wasn't done at the hospital yet. Um, about three or four days prior to the procedure, I noticed that I was getting really irritated with my drive line. And... It was going from being irritated to being really red, swollen, and starting to hurt. And I did not want much time to go by before somebody saw it. So when I finished with the colonoscopy that morning, they asked that I come upstairs to the transplant clinic so that I could see my VAD team and that they could come in and make an assessment as to what's going on. I know a lot of people have posted in the group and sent me email questions regarding the driveline. And again, I want to share with everybody what I went through and what happened with me so that you're a little bit more aware if, you know, you feel the same thing coming on. First and foremost, always contact your team first. Team first, team first, team first. Team first. I can't stress that enough. So at any rate, um, I'm in the uh, room of the transplant clinic and uh, my uh, two of my coordinators came in. And after looking at it, they didn't, they didn't know if it was an infection that went from inside to the outside, whether it was a local infection, but they were able to see that there was trauma to the driveline. Um, and I knew that there was probably going to be a little bit of trauma to the driveline because I only have six rescue dogs and I'm playing with them and petting them and they're... You know, and there were a couple of times when Fallon, especially, she's our uh, Borador, which is a Labrador Border Collie mix. Uh, she's got this habit of wanting to jump up, putting her paws up on me and then pulling my sh my shorts down, which tugs on the drive line. So now I, I virtually walk around 24 hours a day with an anchor on, but um, I digress. Let me go back to uh, uh, the drive line issue. So... After a minute of looking at it, um, they realized that because my white cell count was not up, they had done blood that day, the white cell count wasn't up, that ruled out an internal infection. It did not rule out a local infection, though, meaning that it was right there where the uh, opening for the driveline was to go through. Um, but they, to take precautions, they uh, prescribed two antibiotics for me to take twice a day for the next 14 days. Um, they also gave me this, hold on, let me see if I have to show you. Yeah. Okay. They gave me this thing that is called silver gauze. You see that? That is so odd. It's actually gauze that is made out of silver, real silver, silver that you would, you know, use for jewelry. And she had told Sean, she said, you know, what you need to do is just take this and cut a very narrow strip and then wrap it around the drive line and tuck it over by where the drive, the drive line entrance is and then go ahead and put the dressing over top of that that the silver has healing properties. So we're going to find out, you know, how well that worked. Um, and again, I am not telling you this because it's a prescription you should do. I am simply saying this because I want everybody to understand team first. And this is what happened with me.
Okay? All right. So I got out of there. That was on Thursday. Like I said, I'm walking myself backwards. Uh, Wednesday, I had a cooking class. And we went live in the group, and that went really well. However, Wednesday was the day before the procedure, which meant I couldn't eat anything I made, and that was a little frustrating. Uh, but I, I had my bowl of jello, right? So I'm good. Um, Monday. Monday was a day I was looking forward to with a lot of anticipation and uh, excitement because it was the first time that um, I would be speaking as an ambassador on behalf of Abbott, which is the company that makes the HeartMate 3. And it would not only be speaking uh, with a member of Abbott there and of Ad Team there, but I was in a support group speaking to them. And it was amazing. It was absolutely amazing. Uh, there were probably 25 people there uh, that were members of the support group. Um, and midway through, they brought somebody that just had the VAD implanted like 48 hours prior to that, or it was brand new. The person was brand new with it. Um, and the whole speak that I gave, or the whole talk, the whole speak, yeah, I did speak, the, the, the lecture that I did, if you will, um, all centered around the ease of mobility. Um, it gets frustrating when you have a ton of information about how you're supposed to take care of yourself with this brand new unit, uh, medically, as well as, you know, uh, keeping yourself, uh, uh from getting any infection to making sure you take all of these meds at the appropriate hour. Um, and when you're first out at home, um, you're still not quite sure how these meds are going to affect you. And so, you know, it's kind of like a trial and error basis. And all of this is so overwhelming that one of the things we tend to forget about is the other things that will make our life easier. So if something is going on that's already a bit frustrating and overwhelming, imagine when you realize that, you know, you want to do something and you can't because you've got a bag on your shoulder and it keeps falling down. And the only way to keep it from falling down is to put it over your neck. And now you're walking around with a bag over your neck everywhere you go trying to do things and it's still, you know, banging up against you because it's got batteries in it and all of that. So I wanted to share with them that there is, you know, relatively easy ways to become more mobile if, you know, you feel that you're attached to your bag. And uh, one of those ways was with a Greystone uh, CCW uh, uh, co uh, compression shirt. Uh, Greystone CCW is a carry concealed weapon shirt and it has holster here and a holster here. So you're able to put both batteries there. Um, and a great company. They're actually working with us now on a prototype. I got it, uh, but I need to speak with her about it because there's a couple of things that we need to tweak. But as soon as it's tweaked, we're going to show it off. Um, so I talked about Greystone CCW and that amazing shirt that they gave us uh, to donate. I had bought a shirt and then Greystone was kind enough to donate a shirt at that event. So we did a raffle and it was really, really quite cool. Um, and then I also spoke about the stash band and how the stash band is incorporated with the CCW shirt to give you that extra pocket. Now, once the CCW shirt from Greystone is available for um, the prototype, that has been designed specifically for that, you won't need that. You will need the stash van if you want to go to bed and you don't want the control unit falling off the side of your bed. No problem. You use the stash van. And I was explaining that. Um, and then uh, I introduced Carrie and Tom, who are the ones that have made this amazing tag. And they had a couple of surprises to roll out for everybody. And they also, along with stash fans who donated a van to do the raffle, they donated a VAD tag and got the information from the winner of the tag and uh, have already sent it out to them. So um, it was really a really super cool night. I had a really, really good time. Carrie and Tom, as I said, they got up and they spoke. They did an amazing job. And then we come to the end. And I think the biggest surprise of all was after it was over with. Um, and to be, you know, completely... Uh, uh, 
cognizant of the HIPAA law. I'm not going to mention any names, but I will say this. Um, it has been an honor to have so many people tell me that I have inspired them to do something. From Greystone, who said that to me, to uh, family, friends, and, and, and loved ones, to people I've met on Facebook. And I appreciate that. Uh, I really do, and it touches me deeply. But I'm nowhere near the inspiration that I met on Monday evening. That gentleman is an inspiration. Um, at 74 years of age, he had his dad put in. That was four years ago. He worked full-time for the next two years Okay, full-time worker, 74-year-old man, full-time worker with a dad. And he did that for two years. Now at 76, he finally decided he was going to retire. And at 77, he got diagnosed with cancer. And he's 78 now, and now I meet him. And when he came over to me, this guy's smile lit up the room. It, it was like a thousand megawatt smile. And he was thanking me for being there and thanking me for the information that I gave and told me that he was proud of me for being a part of Abbott and their ambassadorial program. And as we're talking and he's meeting Carrie and Tom and Sean and uh, chatting away, he tells us that he's fighting cancer. So, 74, inspiring, getting an LBAD, way inspiring, working for two years, inspiring, and now having a fight for his life with cancer, so incredibly inspiring, and smiling. Not doing the woe is me, not doing the oh my gosh, I'm in so many, not any of that. And here's a guy that if he wanted to, would have a license to do that. It was the most incredible, inspirational moment I have had since I've had my bad. It really has been. Um, it was just a joy to meet with him and um, to protect everybody's identity. We did not, we did not shoot any video of him talking to us, uh, and that was just to protect privacy. But my goodness, what a joy it was to have met him, and what a joy it was to open my eyes. Uh, to a lot of things, both personal, professional, uh, publicly. Um, you see somebody like him going through that, and you kind of like look at yourself and say in the mirror, boy, I'm one happy boy. Um, this is all I'm dealing with. I am one fortunate guy. I'm going to be smiling all the time. Uh, instead of doing the, you know, oh, poor me, poor me. I, I've seen enough of that, and I'm <laughs> way tired of it. Uh, and I don't want any part of that a part of our group either you know we are a positive group um so at any rate that was my week and it went really well i want to say thank you to the abbott company uh especially thank you to uh susan one of their finest people there she uh uh met me over at um the venue along with tom and carrie and sean uh so i want to say thank you to her uh a special thank you to the bad coordinators that I met that were there, including the social worker. And I really want to say a special thank you to the support group for allowing us to be there, for welcoming us the way they did, for telling us how happy they were that we were there. And to my new friend, the 78-year-old gentleman, my new friend, I want to say to you especially, thank you for providing each and every one of us at that meeting with the opportunity to walk out with a megawatt smile. You are an inspiration. I am a babe in the woods with the bad. You are the inspiration. All right, everybody. Uh, I just wanted to go over some of these things, and uh, I'm going to post this in the uh, LBAD and you group, as well as on a YouTube channel and on our website. So, everybody, thank you for watching, and I'll be doing another video soon. Actually, the next video you see up there is going to be about the mission statement for our website as well as for our Facebook group, uh, how we have uh, pretty much uh, realigned ourselves this past week as far as how we're going to move forward in some of the new programs we want to uh, roll out and 
that'll be a discussion that's going to be two parts. One for me and the other part from uh, Tom and Carrie. So, all right, everybody, you guys have a wonderful rest of your weekend.